Good morning everyone, the passionate Piscator here, down at the uh, Bristol Feeder Canal this morning. It's my local venue, right near my house, so it's not too far to walk. I'm gonna see what I can get. It was lovely and sunny this morning when I woke up and looked out the window, um, but since I've been down here and set up, it's all clouded over. It's quite chilly. I'm just hoping the sun will come out a little bit later on. Um, never mind. I'm sure the fish won't mind too much. I'm going to see what I can get. A few roach, a few bream maybe. I'd like a few rough today. I haven't caught a rough in a fair while. Uh, I've got some maggots. Um, I've got some bread. So it should be interesting. Let's get on it. Joined here today by Wiley Coyote. Let's hope um, I'm better at catching the fish than he is at catching a roadrunner. Well, someone likes my bait this morning at the very least. Yeah, 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 show off, show off. spot you know when I get it right in the corner and it's right there you can grab hold of your fingers but they just kind of there we go just kind of managed to get it in a weird spot right you're gonna stay still for a, a quick pick maybe maybe try keep this net here oh, getting it right to an eight there we go there we are, nice bream, loving the maggots. Pop them back. <laughs> Completely upside down. It's amazing what a difference the sun being out makes to the temperature of the air, isn't it? This morning it felt quite nice, but then again I was walking down the road, just come out of a lovely warm house, but it has really got a nip on it today. <laughs> come on sun, <laughs> I can see a little bit of blue sky. There again, when the sun's out, I just go as red as a beetroot. Completely red. Soon, first bit of sun that touches my skin. That's it. Sunburn straight away. So yeah, I can't complain. I've had a few nice fish already. A few bream and roach. I'm using um, 
three maggots on the hook to try and pick out the bigger fish. This is um, Cattle Market Corner of the Bristol Feeder Canal. Uh, river head back. River? It's not a river at all. It's a canal. It's, I sometimes think it is a river because it has a very, very slight flow on it or it comes off of the Bristol Avon. But the canal heads off round that way and through into the um, Bristol Harbour itself. Um, you see quite a lot of anglers down here, particularly at the weekends. Um, I don't see them catching very much. <laughs> they, quite a lot of them tend to be carp anglers. And although, as we know, the carp are in there, uh, they are a bit few and far between. Although, if you can grab one for a moment and have a chat to them, um, sometimes they've got pictures of the fish they catch from here, and uh, some of the carp are very impressive indeed. But even they agree but it's very difficult to get them. You need to put in a lot of time and effort and um, you need to watch the water. Right, nothing for it. Reveal the bald. I'm gonna put on my lovely warm winter hat. My mum knitted this for me um, last year. To keep my little bonts nice and warm in the cold weather. Uh, I chose the, uh, the wool, of course, to go with all my fishing gear, but um, God, does make a huge difference covering the old it the old ears up ah, that's a bit better there you go I do have a hood I could put that up too all oh, right fog now don't I yeah <laughs> and we've got one a little Tommy Ruff I don't know why they call them Tommy Ruffs. But there you go, beautiful little fish. Very much like a perch, of course. It's nice spiky dorsal fin, much bigger than a perch, I think, for the size of the fish. Little salt and pepper ruff. Love these little things. I'm quite a mini species fanatic, so I'm always happy to catch a ruff. Some people are very rude about them, but not me. Absolutely love them. And who couldn't? Look at the colours. Fantastic. I think I'm very lucky to have the Bristol Feeder Canal right on my doorstep. It certainly helped out during the lockdown when you couldn't travel to go fishing. It's only about 15-20 minute walk from my house and it's um, actually surprisingly diverse. You've got this end of course which is the uh, what I call the more industrial area with Bristol in the background, all the building work, cranes and all of this um, building work going on around me which has been going on for overly long and I think lockdown has put them behind a little bit not quite sure what they're doing building houses or something but as you travel down a bit further of course you've got the lock and it you have a lot of willow trees there all sort of billowing down around you it feels a little bit more countrified uh, even though you are right in the center of Bristol there's absolutely tons of fish in here I've heard in the past that um, it got a bit polluted and it wasn't very good for fishing but I haven't found that now it's just packed full of fish. Uh, you have roach, and gudgeon, and dace, bleak, carp, perch, ruff, eels. Um, it's really good um, mixed coarse fishery. <laughs> and plenty of wildlife. <laughs> that would been great when Crover went past. A few ducks and swans. You always see kingfishers scooting up and down here. And I always think kingfishers are a good sign of a really healthy fishery because they wouldn't be here if the fish weren't. A lot of twitches on the rod tip still. Probably lots of little gudgeon and rough. Um, slightly, slightly warming up now, which is good. But, you know, as Bernard Cribbins sang, I'd rather be fishing than out on some date. All you need to go fishing's a rod and some bait and you sit and you wait and he's not wrong sitting and waiting is what it's all about but that's the most enjoyable part sometimes and also i'm painfully single so um that's probably <laughs> that's probably a tale to tell as well perhaps i should go out on some date sometimes but i'd rather be fishing i must admit on a day like today even though it is a bit chilly I would rather be fishing. It's certainly cheaper. It's leftover maggots, leftover bread, 
Uh, leftover worms. Haven't paid a penny for today. This is a free fishery to fish. So, <laughs> it only helps on the old pennies. Another lovely bream. A lot of anglers have read about bream as well. So they don't fight very hard, they just slop into the net. But if you use really light gear like I'm using, I'm only using a um, three pound hook length. Pop him back, he's clearly ready to go back. There we go. There we go, he's giving a little knock. <laughs> he sat a little, I put him back and he just sat there flat like that, like, what do I do now? It's like, okay, you, you can go, you can go. Well, oh, he's gone. Um, yeah, if you, I've got a three pound hook length on, which is maybe a little bit too heavy, but I've got a really light rod and I'm getting a lot of fight out of them. Most people, I think, catch them on carp gear, really thick lines and stiff rods, and they do just come in like a bin lid, as their name, nickname suggests. Um, no, if you have the right gear and balance it out well, you can get a lot of um, fight out of a bream, um, even more so in a river, because you've got the, the flow of the river pushing against the flatness of the fish. Um, they do love maggots, I've found out. But I do have a few worms on me, so maybe if I pop a few worms on, I might get some bigger ones. But I'm happy getting the bites at the moment. chosen ground bait for the day. There's a couple of slices of bread every now and then. Just dipped into the water. Getting nice and wet. But I'll mush them up into a nice ground bait and chuck into the spot I want. Quick shout out to the nice chap who just walked past who's watched one of my videos recently <laughs> and uh, saw me catch this lovely roach. There we go, 11 ounces. Beautiful canal roach, plump as anything, probably in here doing a bit of breeding. Fantastic fish. Sun's out, bum's out. Put some bread on the hook now. I've been feeding bread as my ground bait all morning. So I figured, hey, stick a bit on the hook, why not? And we're getting little roach on the bread, including that uh, fish I caught earlier on, which was the biggest one so far. Oh, duck crash landing <laughs> into the swim. That's the downside of fishing bread. It does attract in the ducks. You'd be very mindful of them, but I'm fishing on the bottom, so there's no chance of me hooking one of these. Just lost a cracking looking roach. Must have been about a pound, just got about a foot away from the net and did a little twirl and off he went back into the water. Well, that's how you unhook him I suppose. What do you make of that Mr Coyote? Yeah, you look pretty smug with yourself, didn't you? Oh well, keep on going I suppose.
as soon as the bait touched the water, I had a little nibble on. <laughs> this guy's really cross about it too. It's a little rough. <laughs> Look how cross he is. Oh my word. I'd be cross too, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> Despite the sun coming out, <laughs> this wind is still pretty chilly. This is my last cast out now. These fish have had more food than I've had. And I'm absolutely starving. Okay, to be fair, I do have plenty of bread. I could just eat that raw from the bag. But I'm not going to. <laughs> what we got here. Oh, this is unusual. Fishing bread. Swing him in. <laughs> We're going to need unhooking. Where's my lovely uh, pink disgorger? There we go. I spent ages looking for this earlier on. Could not find it whatsoever. Okay, lovely job. Oh, just dropped it. And you'll know where it was. It was where I always keep it, tucked in my hat. Spent a good five minutes looking for it. <sighs> Happens every time. Well, from fishing bread, and that was a, I literally just cast it out. I don't think the bread even touched the bottom. And a perch? <laughs> what sort of perch eats bread? <laughs> I can only imagine. As it was wafting down, he saw it moving. He came out and snapped it back. Right, pop you in there. That is going to be my last fish of the day. I've had a lot of bream, I've had a lot of roach, I've had um, some ruff and some perch. So it's been a really nice day. Thank you very much for joining me. Oh, actually, before we go, what'd you make of that, Wiley? Yeah, he seems pretty happy about the whole thing. <laughs> um, Thank you very much for joining me. I have been the passionate Piscator here on the Bristol Feeder Canal and I will see you again another time. Thank you very much. Bye.